Now the GTX 970 may be a few years old, but at its current price and current performance here in 2020 can actually still be a very solid graphics card option in any budget, you know, gaming PC build. Let's take a look at and see how this graphics card holds up in today's modern games. But hey, what is up guys? My name is Robin. Welcome to Arbin Hardware. Hope you're doing fantastic. Today we're gonna take a in-depth look at the GTX 970 and see if it's still worth your attention in 2020. Now, if you're into, you know, gaming PC builds, you're interested in the upcoming gaming consoles, Xbox Series X and PS5, uh, you're into graphics cards and you're interested in the latest in regards to what Nvidia and the AMD got in plan for this year, you definitely want to subscribe to the channel and you also want to hit the bell notification so that you never miss an, uh, an upcoming video uh, from this channel yeah with that said let's take a look at this rather red and black beast uh, from this is from a site called the geforce uh, gtx 970 gaming it's fueled by the gm 104 the maxwell architecture it's got 1664 cuda cores on a 256 bit memory bus it's got four gigs of ggr5 memory although some of it is a bit slower but yeah more on that in a few seconds it's got a base clock of 1140 megahertz and when it launched it retailed for about 300 bucks uh, the graphics chip itself is cooled by the msi twin frozer 5 it's got a total of five heat pipes and we got dual uh, 100 millimeter pwm operated uh, fans here uh, while the gtx 970 got four gigs of vram only three and a half gigabytes are of the faster GDDR5 type. The last 500 megabyte is a bit slower. Nvidia didn't tell people about this, and they got actually got a bit of backlash for it when gamers found out about it. Does it matter though? Uh, for the most part, maybe not. But in cases where the game uses more than three and a half gigabytes of video memory, it can actually have an impact on the frame rate a bit. And while we're on the subject, overclocking is also an option here. And it, I've actually overclocked this graphics card quite a lot. With a few megahertz overclock on the GPU and the memory as well. You can squeeze out about another four to even eight uh, FPS in some games. But for this video, I'm gonna leave everything at stock speeds to give you guys a better idea how a stock GTX 970 holds up. For this testing, I got the GTX 970 hooked up to a X370 Crosshair 6 Hero from Asus. We got 16 gigs of RAM and we got the AMD Ryzen 3900X. Now to give you an idea what a modern mid-range graphics card would perform like, I decided to also include benchmark figures from my RX 5600 XT review that way you can actually see how much faster a 280 dollar graphics card is so that you can determine if you think the the gtx 970 is still worth your attention now keep in mind i'm currently running tests of some of the most popular games uh, that came out last year and so we're looking at some pretty hard to run AAA games here running at pretty much maxed out settings altogether now less the morning esport games will run just fine on the gtx 970 so you don't have to think about that being a problem and with that said yeah let's take a look at the benchmarks first up we got assassin's creed odyssey running with very high settings as you can see ultra high with taa in dx11 and 1080p and as we can see the 970 holds up pretty okay considering this is six year old hardware as a comparison the 5600 xt almost manages to reach the magic 60 fps mark yeah with the same settings now i know what you're thinking this ain't gonna be playable right keep in mind though you can lower the settings and by doing so you're going to gain a lot of fps and on top of that yes you do have overclocking if you're not satisfied but yeah overall this game is very demanding and benefits quite a lot from a beefy cpu with lots of course as well with that said next up we got battlefield 5 or bf5 and i gotta say considering the settings we're running on everything being set to ultra and taa activated a very solid result for such a, an old uh, graphics card next up we got control and again we're seeing numbers in the 30 ish area and keep in mind we are running very high settings uh, the rx 5600 is almost twice as fast in this game with an average frame rate of 71 but lowering the settings getting close to the magic 60f marks should uh, definitely be possible moving on to far cry new dawn the 970 did a pretty good job here considering the settings we're currently running on again i gotta say for being you know an almost six year old graphics card i'm actually 
very impressed. At ultra settings in 1080, the game runs incredibly well on the 970. Now for the RX 5600, you even have the option of going for 1440p here, and that's something worth having in mind in case your budget is a bit higher. And this proves that spending about $280 gives you tons of graphics power in 2020. Metro Exodus is known for being extremely intense as can be seen, but again lowering the settings a bit should give you you know, smooth gameplay. Even Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of many games releasing last year that can be very demanding. Last up we got Division 2 which apparently runs very well on the 970 as can be seen with an average frame rate of 49 FPS. I was quite surprised to see this and I wouldn't do too much about the settings here. You just apply some overclocking here and you're looking at a very smooth playing game for sure. Now with all the benchmarks done and clear, who is this graphics card? actually 4. Now considering the fact that most games that came out in last year can actually run pretty well on this graphics card makes it a pretty interesting choice actually. That said, as can be seen, AMD's brand new Radeon RX 5600 XT fueled by Navi on 7 nanometer has no problem whatsoever maxing out every AAA game out there while still giving you that silky smooth frame rate. And so the question becomes how big is your budget and how much are you willing to spend on your graphics card and while I do find the 970 benchmark figures impressive, there is no denying that AMD did a fantastic job with the RX 5600 and considering the powers you get for under $300 makes it a very compelling product. But on the other hand, if you're just looking for a cheap graphics card that can resurrect your a few year old gaming PC, opting for the 970 can actually also be a very solid option for you. The GTX 970 in 2020 is definitely a graphics card worth considering and the good thing is it won't burn a hole in your wallet. And in case you're looking for a brand new gaming PC I also got a few options for you and all those builds are linked up down in the video description box below. Please drop a comment down below to help this channel out and I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions please let me know. And in case you want to check out the RX 5600 you find uh, links to the graphics card down in the video description down below.